In the horror and fantasy world Lovecraft created in his books, he talks about an amphibian race called the Deep Ones who are humanoid beings with fish, human and amphibian-like traits. Lovecraft explains that they even have cities submerged in water and are immortal until they are slain. These creatures are superior to human but also prefer to mate with humans as well. This powerful Lovecraftian amphibian race is ruled by Dagon, who is also called Father Dagon and his consort Hydra. Dagon is a god who appears in Mesopotamian mythology. In these beliefs, Dagon is a god associated with fertility or grain and is depicted as a half-man, half-fish god. He also appears in the Hebrew Bible and is referred to as the leading god of the Philistines. We can leave that to another video because Dagon in Mesopotamian beliefs holds a prominent role in this pantheon, making him an interesting sea god. Lovecraft on the other hand portrays Dagon as an evil entity. But this creature and the Mesopotamian god share so many similarities that it's clear that Lovecraft got his inspiration for this demonic creature from the Mesopotamian fish god. Dagon is often referred to as one of the great old ones and plays a prominent role in Cthulhu mythos. He first appeared in Lovecraft's short story Dagon and later appeared frequently in stories related to Cthulhu mythos. Dagon has been described as a massive gigantic deep one over 50 feet tall which some would approximate to the height of a 30 stories building. Like every other Lovecraftian creature, Dagon has a hideous appearance that the human mind cannot comprehend. Anyone who looks directly at the god loses their sanity. There is an argument as to whether Dagon is actually a great old one or just an overgrown deep one because the deep ones are said to be immortal unless they are being killed and they will continue to grow throughout their lifetime. But even with this theory, Dagon holds an important position in the Deep Ones race, making him one of the oldest Deep Ones alive. Dagon holds a prominent place in the Lovecraftian pantheon, along with the most famous creature, Cthulhu. Cthulhu, Dagon and Hydra are said to form the Trinity of the Sea. This alone elevates Dagon to the same position as Cthulhu and thereby earns the same respect as Cthulhu does. He hides Cthulhu's daughter Cthulhu in one of his underground cities and takes care of her with his concept. Cthulhu is also an important creature in the Lovecraftian mythology as she is the one who will give birth to Cthulhu after his prophesied death. It is said that Dagon wanted to conquer the human world. The Deep Ones anyway have a desire for humans, so they manage to take over Innsmouth which is a seaside town in Massachusetts at Dagon's command. What's fascinating is that the Deep Ones are able to mate with humans and produce offspring that look human-like when they were young and gradually takes the monstrous form of the Deep Ones. Innsmouth is a town isolated from the outside world, so it didn't attract attention. This remoteness made the town an ideal place to start spreading the dominance of Dagon. The Deep Ones managed to strike a deal with the people of Innsmouth to keep their area abundant with fish and to supply them with gold artifacts of inhuman design. In return, the people of Innsmouth were forced to mate with the Deep Ones. The people of Innsmouth readily accepted Dagon as their god and the Deep Ones as their masters, because unlike human religions that rely on faith alone, Dagon provided them with tangible benefits such as food and wealth very quickly and efficiently. So the humans along with the Deep Ones created a cult called the Historic Order of Dagon to worship the terrifying creature. Dagon's main reason for creating this cult was not only because he wanted to make people feel inferior to his race, but also because he wanted to expand their race to have enough population to fight other humans and conquer the world. Hybrids born from the union of humans and deep ones are usually born as normal humans, but they are psychologically different compared to normal human children and they often dream about underwater cities. Physical changes begin to occur as these hybrids enter their teenage years and by middle age, the hybrid completes its transformation and turns into a fully grown deep one. 
but not all hybrids are able to go through these changes as those who refuse to accept their inheritance lose their sanity. After becoming a deep one, these hybrids return to the sea to live with the rest. Eventually, the historic order of Dagon, which is also known as the Order of Dagon, became the primary religion of Innsmouth. Followers of Dagon became corrupted themselves that they were even willing to murder another if Dagon wills it, just so that they get to keep the power of Dagon within their community. Over time, human sacrifices also became a part of the religion. People who went against Dagon's will or tried to expose the cult were seriously dealt with and they suffered brutal deaths. Some say that the three gods, Dagon, Hydra and Cathila, also came to land and lived in Innsmouth after the cult was firmly established. Robert Olmsted, who was a descendant of a hybrid, learns about his inheritance and the changes in his body that will soon occur, exposed the hidden town and the demonic cult to the US government. The city was then torpedoed and destroyed, and so the Order of Dagon was disbanded. But there are beliefs that the Order has not been completely dissolved and is still operating in secret. In stories that believe Dagon, Hydra and Cathila lived among the residents of Innsmouth, further explain that the three gods returned to their underwater city after barely surviving the US Navy's attack. Lovecraft first introduces Dagon in his short story Dagon. This is also the first short story in which Lovecraft mentions a Cthulhu mythos element. The story follows the narration of a World War I sailor who then becomes addicted to morphine after escaping from an abduction. The narrator explains that he was once kidnapped by German pirates in the Pacific Ocean, but he manages to escape in a lifeboat. The sailor gets drifted away into the Pacific Sea and eventually reaches a slimy expanse of hellish black mire which extended as far as he could see. The mire was filled with rotting fish and debris he didn't recognize and gave out an awful smell. The sailor theorizes that the area must have been a part of the Pacific floor and has been pushed up due to volcanic activities. He spends three days in the lifeboat until the mud dries up so he can walk on it to find possible rescue. After walking for two days, he reached a mountain on which he saw a huge monolith covered with unfamiliar hieroglyphs of fish, eels, whales and many other aquatic symbols and also hideous fish-like men. The monolith was located near water channel at the bottom of the chasm. As the sailor looked at the monolith, a terrifying creature emerged from the water. The creature was a monstrous humanoid fish-like monster with large scaly arms and made a terrifying sound as it emerged from the water. Terrified, the sailor ran back to his lifeboat and faced a grey storm that he vaguely remembers. He later wakes up in a San Francisco hospital and learns that he has been rescued in the middle of the ocean by a US ship. He tries to tell his story to the public, but no one believes him. So the sailor becomes addicted to morphine because of the fear and because no one believed him. He even started to suffer from nightmares of the creature, especially when the moon is gibbous and waning. The story later reveals that the narrative is actually the sailor's suicide note. The story ends as the sailor hears a noise at the door and a large wet body slams against it. This suggests that Dagon himself has come to claim the sailor's life. Just like all other creatures that appear in Cthulhu's mythos, Dagon is a monster that directly destroyed the sanity of the human mind. The terrifying fact about Lovecraft's creation is that he actually had realistic dreams about the creatures he wrote about. So many believe that Lovecraft entered a different dimension in his sleep and that the creatures he talks about are real monsters. What do you think of this story? As always guys, thank you so much for stopping by and a very special thank you to my Patreon and subscribers. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you again in another story to tell.